you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want to talk to you tonight about nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. And the outline that we have handed out, number one, believe the Word of God. Believe the Word of God. Number two, recognize the spirit of lawlessness. Recognize the spirit of lawlessness. Number three, identify the works of the Antichrist. Identify the works of the Antichrist. The purpose of biblical prophecy is not for us to make a calendar of events, but to build Christian character in our walk with Christ. There will always be date setters in the world, and that was exactly what was happening uh, to the Thessalonian Christians. False teachers had de de uh, deceived the believers into thinking they were already living in the day of the Lord. There was even a letter being circulated claiming this false teaching was sent by Paul himself. Paul heard that Christians there were deeply shaken by this teaching. Paul wrote to the church to assure them that this letter wasn't from him. 2 Thessalonians 2 explain, explanation is the explanation of why the, letter, uh, why the letter sent was wrong doctrine. Paul told them that they were not living in the day of the Lord because the other prophetic events had to come true first. The teaching seemed to calm the Christians and stabilize their faith in the Lord. Paul taught that these events that had these events had to take place before the day of the Lord. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you remember in chapter 1, uh, I, I preached, uh, uh, it's been several months ago uh, there, uh, there was persecution and tribulation going on at the church there. And a lot of that was just causing trouble and unrest. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is Satan will use anything to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the key tonight is just because somebody says something, I mean, somebody can, you know, buy TV time, they can put on a suit, uh, and they can seem religious, but if they are teaching false doctrine, we do not need to be listening uh, to that speaker, to that person. And uh, I will say this, living in the last days, uh, I truly believe that's going to become more and more prevalent uh, you know, people's opinions, uh, people's predictions. And if anybody tells you that they know the day that the, Jesus is coming, uh, you will realize that, number one, he will not come on that day. All right, number two, uh, that person does not know the Word of God and what the Word of God teaches. Father, be with us tonight as we look at nothing but the truth. And God, I thank you uh, for the Apostle Paul and Lord, his teaching to the Thessalonians. Uh, God, he just was an awesome writer, and uh, God, he lived it. Uh, he just was inspired by God. He was a wonderful, wonderful speaker and preacher, and God, I pray that we would learn from his teaching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you look at the top, at least in the New King James Version, of uh, the great apostasy. And folks, apostasy, and, and this is going on in America there's a falling away from the church, okay? Uh, we are down in baptisms, and I'm just talking about Southern Baptists. Uh, we are down in church uh, growth. We are down in numbers. Uh, you know, there's churches uh, that close all the time, not just Southern Baptist churches, uh, but Satan is having a field day. And, uh, you know, those days uh, where, and again, I'm kind of dating myself, uh, to where church was the thing to do on Sunday, the days where there was what was called the blue law, where you could not open a business on Sundays, uh, those days are past. And uh, this is just another ploy of Satan. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, and folks, it's, uh, it's truly going to get worse uh, before it gets better. So let's look at believe the Word of God. Now, brethren... Uh, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, 
either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it was from us, as though the day of the Lord had come. And we are teaching through the book of Revelation. This just goes along with that so well uh, that the day of the Lord, we know uh, that's the tribulation time uh, in the seven years, three and a half of you know peace and tranquility, and then three and a half of just basically uh, total chaos. So again, Paul is writing to you know the church, but he he was really calling out the false teachers. And folks, if somebody's teaching heresy, then uh, you know we need to call those people out if they're if they're not teaching uh, you know what the true gospel is, if they're not teaching what true doctrine. Uh, of the Bible is, then we do need to call those out. And not only false teachers in those days, there was false prophecy going on. Now look specifically at the gathering to him, and, and we know the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. And what's crazy is Paul just taught about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let me just remind you, look, look at 1 Thessalonians 4.13. But I do not want you to be ignorant. Paul was saying, again, he's addressing. So this, this issue is not something that has not come up before. But people weren't listening. They weren't buying into it. They weren't believing it. All right, concerning those who have fallen asleep. And death was an issue uh, there. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Folks, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Everything we are is in Jesus Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we do believe that, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Notice how he chooses his words. He's saying this is gospel. This is the truth. You know, in a court of law, and you take the oath, and you raise your hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? They're still saying it. So help you God. And that's what Paul was just so upset about, was that he had taught them the truth, but someone came in behind him and was teaching something that was a false doctrine. And folks, we, we do, folks. We need to defend the faith. We need to defend our doctrine. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And again, I understand the word rapture is not here, but, but it's, it's fixing to say what it means. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. And that's where we get the phrase, the rapture, with him in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So he had already taught this doctrine. But folks, I'm just telling you, they're going to keep cropping up and cropping up and cropping up this false teaching and false doctrine. And I believe with all my heart, we are going to go up. We are going to be uh, raptured out of here. Matter of fact, Revelation I believe it's 2220. It says basically, even come now, Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, but if Jesus himself was standing in his back and he asked us tonight, he yelled in here, Anyone, anybody want to go now? Okay, you better get out of my way. You better get out. I, I, you'll, you'll see a preacher running down the aisles, all right? Uh, again, I love life. I love my life. I love my church. I love my family. I love everything I do. I am a blessed person. But folks, when you think about what that's going to entail and what that's, what that's going to happen, I mean, how would you not want to go? All right, let's keep reading. We ask you not so, so soon to be shaken in mind. And folks, I'm telling you, Satan can't have our heart, but he plays with our minds. He puts thoughts in your heart. And you know the, the biggest ploy that... <clears throat> He has negative thinking, okay? And folks, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. I mean, I, I, I think there are negative thinkers that they don't even understand how negative they are thinking. 
Okay, every there's something wrong with everything. There's something wrong, or 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 nothing good ever happens to me. And folks, I understand we go through trials and tribulations, but I'm simply saying, folks, we need to have the right kind of thinking because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, says Scripture. And you'll become a negative person. And these people were, were shaken in mind or troubled. And the other word for troubled is worry. Folks, we worry way too much. Way too much. I heard a stat one time that said 70% of the things that we worry about never come true. So what did you do? You just wasted time worrying about things, either by spirit or by word or by letter. All right? And again, it, notice that it wasn't a capital S. A capital S means the Holy Spirit. So somebody said, I have this revelation, or God has told me this. All right? Again, folks, number one, you got to figure out who is saying it and what is this person doing and what is this person like? What, what is his character? And truly he is. Just because somebody says the Spirit said it doesn't mean that the Spirit said it. Okay, so you just can't, if, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, is what I'm trying to tell. That's what truth is. We know truth is the Word of God. If it doesn't line up with their, they, they are not telling the truth. Or by word, or by letter. Now Paul gets his, his jab in here. He said, hey, I, I'll identify myself. It's in writing. If I say I wrote it, I wrote it. And he's just simply saying, whoever started this rumor, and folks, I'm telling you, rumors are everywhere. I mean, you, you could go on the internet, and you, I'm, I'm just telling you, you could spend all day looking at lies and, and misquotes and all these things that are going on. And that's what was going on. Paul was saying, listen, folks, I didn't write that letter, all right? I didn't write it. If, you, if I, if I would have wrote it, I would have signed it, and you would have known it was me. And it says, as from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Paul wrote earlier in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Talking about our final victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, nor does corruption enter, uh, enter or corrupt, corruption enter incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will be changed. Folks, there's two changes that's going to happen in your life if you are saved. Number one, you get saved. That changes. And I, and this, I mean, and because you are saved, that second chain is going to happen. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. Notice how both scriptures has trumpets in there, and we're studying that uh, in Revelation. And the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. What are we going to get? Right up there it said, flesh and blood is not going to enter the kingdom of God. Folks, we're going to get our glorified body. All right? Every doctor that I've went to in the last five months has told me two things. You know what the best thing you could do, Mike? Diet and exercise. Dirty words, bad words. Won't you be glad to get a body? Yeah, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to grow about three or four inches. I'll be 6'3", 175 pounds. Perfect body. And again, I'm kidding about that. But folks, when you think of your perfect body, you know, most of us that are 65 and older, when we get up, we're, we're trying to figure out what's working and what's not working. Okay? You know, that leg don't want to work today. All right? And more than once, that brain doesn't want to work today for me. All right? Can you imagine being in a perfect body? And again, I'm not talking outside that dumb movie. It wasn't it 10 or something? Long, long time ago. All right? And I'm just like, I really don't want to see her running on a beach. That, that is not good for men, okay? That's a messed up thing. Perfect means sinless. We are going to be sinless. We are going to be perfect. 
we are not going to hurt all the pain and all the sorrow. Everything that God said is going to happen is going to happen. Look at verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then it shall be brought up the past saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Folks, we shouldn't be scared of death as a Christian. And again, I don't have a death wish, all right? Most people are more worried about the way they're going to die because I, 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 I can give you 100% of something. If this is going to happen. If the God doesn't rapture us out of here, you're going to die. <laughs> it's going to happen, all right? And we should not worry about it. I mean, my Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. So Paul is just going over this and trying to say Scripture that he's already said, okay? Hey, it's going to be okay. Believe the Word of God. Believe it, all right? Uh, Verse 55, I know I didn't put this on the screen, but, O death, where's your sting? O Hades, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But here it is. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, folks, we win. We are going to, and, and I can't fathom this in my own mind, we're going to be like Jesus, okay? That's what First John says. We are going to be like him, and I cannot wait for that day. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Folks, what is he saying? Just keep doing it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, you know, the days get long. Man, they've been hot. I don't know about you, but I'm just kind of sick of this hot weather. Anybody else? Perfect environment. No sin, no pain, no death. All right? No disease. And Paul is just saying, I taught it, and listen, put your faith and trust. He didn't say put your faith and trust in me. He said put your faith and trust in the Word of God. So look at the second one. Recognize the spirit of lawlessness. Let no one deceive you by any means. And again, folks, there's deceit. Lies, people lie, 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 liar, liar, pants on fire. It's just crazy how in the day in which we live now, people can look you dead in the eye and lie. All right? And and that is the... uh, you know, the lawlessness that he is talking about. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Folks, the folly apostasy has come, all right? I mean, you would have to have your your head in the sand not to understand that apostasy is already here. I mean, you look at all that's going on, folks. People kill people for no reason at all. Okay, just, just murder people. They, it's just crazy the way it is. And apostasy has come. Uh, and the man of sin is revealed. And the son of perdition, and we know what all that is because we are speaking of that, who opposes and exalts himself above that which is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Folks, there's only one God. There's only one Jesus. And I'm telling you, you have to understand it's, it's not a statue sitting on a, a mantle. It's not some golden idol that people worship. And, you know, I just, one of the crazy things I saw in India was, was a monkey temple. And this huge monkey out there. And people would come literally and throw food around that temple. And, and you know, just... I mean, when you went there, it just looked like, you know, they didn't have garbage cans. They just, they just kept throwing this food on these idols that are dead and mean absolutely nothing. So, folks, that spirit is here. The spirit of lawlessness is here. It's like people that, you know, like they have a hurricane and, and people are already hurting or they have tornadoes and people come in around them and start looting and stealing things. You have to be one low-life person to do something like that. And what used to be sin is just almost normal nowadays. That is what the spirit of lawlessness is. And that's what's so amazing about the Scripture. 
Paul speaks of this, and that was exactly what was going on in their days. All right? And again, I'm not talking about hurricanes. I'm talking about people that, that, you know, they act like there are no rules. They act like, you know, it's my life. I can do whatever I want with it. And, and that's what he is saying here. Matter of fact, uh, turn, turn to 2 Timothy 3. Here's another description. But know this, 2 Timothy 3.1, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Folks, we are in perilous times. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers. You know, they're just sometimes... I, I don't get the, the cursing. All right, I, I, I just don't understand why somebody has to, you know, say these words on TV and say these, it's just, I mean, it's pure profanity. I call it the language of the ignorant. Okay, can't you just talk to me? Can't you just use, you know, English words, not these, these cuss words? Blasphemy, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Folks, this is a description of where we are right now. Slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I was flipping through the other day, and I saw a title called Sex Island. Now, am I going to... Are you kidding me? It, it's just... I don't know where they think this stuff up, folks. It's a shame. What, what we would be ashamed of back in our early days, it's on TV all the time. Having a form of godliness, but not in its power, from, uh, and from such, people turn away. So Paul is trying to tell them, listen, it doesn't matter what era you lived in. It doesn't matter what year you lived in. You know, we're talking biblical time, first century times. These things were going on back there then, and the spirit of lawlessness uh, was all around then. Now look at verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? That's the second time he said that. He was reminding them, folks, what was true? Matter of fact, the Bible says the Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God's Word hasn't changed. God's uh, doctrines haven't changed. God's laws haven't changed. It's like people. There are people, and, and, and I've heard, I heard a preacher on a TV say this, that we do not have to obey the Old Testament anymore because that was the Old Testament days. Okay? Folks, I'm just telling you, the Bible is true from Genesis to Revelation. It is applicable from Genesis to Revelation, and we need to understand that. Verse 6. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. Could you imagine if the Holy Spirit wasn't here? Can you imagine what would happen? I mean, if there was no restraining at all, okay? Because I'm just telling you, God is sovereign. God is in control. And if Satan had his way, it would be a free-for-all down here. But God is restraining, and the Holy Spirit is restraining. Now again, you know, with Christians, I mean, we should follow the Holy Spirit, we should follow God's law, and I know Christians mess up. Folks, we need to understand it's going to get worse and worse and worse, and we need to be that light in this unrestrained world. Verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And again, I'm just telling you, two things will happen when the rapture of the church comes. Number one, there'll be to total chaos. All right, people are going to be in planes with two Christian pilots, and they're going down. There are going to be all kinds of people in cars, on freeways and in places like that. And I'm telling you, they're going to be mass wrecks. Okay, all, these, all this chaos that's happening and, and then when the Christians go out and when the dust is settled, I mean, the, the, the spirit of lawlessness is going to be here, folks. It'll be total chaos. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. 
I thank God that as a Christian, I don't have to sit around and think, I wonder if, I wonder if God wants me to do that. Folks, I'm telling you, if you are a growing Christian, you know what God wants you to do. You're growing in the Lord. You're reading your Bible. You, you, you understand how important prayer time is. But when that spirit of lawlessness comes and the Holy Spirit, it's not that the Holy Spirit won't be here. I'm just saying all these Christians that were trying to do the right thing are going to be taken out of here because even during the tribulation times, we know people are going to be saved. We've already taught that. Okay, the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, there's going to be people saved, but I'm telling you, though, it's going to be harder and harder and harder, all right, because of the spirit of lawlessness. Verse 8, and when the lawless, lawless one uh, will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy uh, with the brightness of his coming. Folks, it is, it's going to happen, okay? Christ will defeat the Antichrist. Uh, Matthew 24. Look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 23. This is Jesus speaking, and he's talking about the great tribulation. And then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The miracles that will be happening, we're getting real close to the two witnesses and, and other things, you know, and there's already been miracles. I mean, the 144 sealed, uh, you know, one of the greatest revivals, you know, uh, during that time and these, these people, you know, getting saved and all of this and the chaos and all that. I mean, those are miracles there. But Satan mimics things of Christ. He mimics things of God. He tries to convince. I mean, that's exactly what he was doing with Adam and Eve in that conversation. You know, no, no, if you bite this apple, you will be like God. Well, folks, I got news for you. <laughs> that's not our job. We need to be like Jesus and imitate his life. But there's only one God. We need to come under God's authority. And we need to avoid people that are just lawless, okay, where there are no rules. And, and I would like to say it's going to get better, but, I, you know, I, I just I don't think it will, folks. I think it's going to be worse and worse. And you know what really sad? What's, what it's coming down to, we actually have to pick the best of the worst. Now think about that. We have to, we have to choose, whereas if we had the choice, we wouldn't choose anyone. Any list, all right? Because the, de the deal of, of your morals and the way you carry yourself and the Christian attitude and the Christian words and where all that thing, the, the day, I'm just telling you, people say anything. And what's even crazier, people pay to, and, and they watch TV of some of the dumbest things. And again, sometimes you're just going, you're going through trying to just see if there's anything on and you see a caption. Is this really my baby? Why do you care? I'm not stopping and watching. Is it Maury? Did, did I get a Maury or something? I'm just like, that's not even entertainment. That's stupidity, folks. And, but yet, nowadays, that's normal. All right? And I'm sorry. I'm just kind of on a soapbox, soapbox about this lawlessness, but I just don't get I mean, I know where it comes from, folks. It comes from Satan, but... It's just getting worse and worse. Temptation Island was another one. I about decided I don't want to go to an island. <laughs> I just want to stay somewhere else because it's just it's ridiculous. It really is. Number three, I defend, identify the works of the Antichrist. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. He empowers the Antichrist with all powers and signs and lying wonders with all unrighteousness and deception among those who perish. And folks, I'm telling you, Satan, he, he, he is really, in a second, we'll go to, this, well, well, let's just go right now. Let's just stop there. Uh, John chapter 8. John 8. John 8. 
verse 44. Again, you know, Jesus is, you know, talking to the scribes and the Pharisees, and, uh, you know, they just, they would not recognize Jesus as the Son of God. They would call him all kinds of names, Beelzebub, you know, and just all kinds. And, you know, he, he just, it, it was kind of like if you back Jesus into a corner and you mess with him long enough, he's going to just shoot straight at you because this is what he's doing in these verses. He says, you are of your father, the devil, <laughs> all right? I mean, folks, I'm just telling you, uh, you know, I, I grew up on a lot of preaching uh, to where it was just, you know, you know, sin, sin, hate is hate, you know, uh, and some people call it hell and fire and brimstone preaching, okay? But folks, hell is real, and if you die without Christ, you're going there. We still need to warn people about hell in, in, in the truth of that, all right? And the desires of your father you want to do, all right? When you are lost, that's exactly what you want to do. I didn't worry about what God thinks or what the church thought or what the Bible said when I was lost. I was lost, all right? And it says, you are your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, all right? Again, tempted Adam and Eve, then he convinced Cain and Cain that his brother Abel needs to die. And, and I'm just telling you, ever since then, uh, deceit and hate and murder has been in mankind and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. None, folks. Satan is the master deceiver. He makes wrong right and right wrong. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Folks, I'd hate to think that my, my dad, my father, uh, was the devil spiritually, that, that I was like him. And folks, we know where the devil ends up, and, and, and he just he lies to mankind, and I, I just get so tired of the lies that he tells and that, that people buy it hook, line, and sinker. And it says, verse 45, but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Folks, you think about Jesus. What was he here for? Obviously to die on the cross for our sins. But what was his message? Folks, it was a message of love and forgiveness. And I know he got after people too. But I mean, you know, he, he tells a lady that, you know, been married five times and sleep, you know, living with somebody else. Just go and sin no more. I mean, you know, sometimes I think even Jesus kind of gets a bad rap on. But, but folks, you have to understand he never sinned, okay? He never sinned, and, and he was just he was just trying to tell them, you know, you can know the truth, and I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he was rejected by many folks. All right, back in our scripture, verse 10, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love, they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. What, did, what does the Bible tell us? Second Peter 3, verse 9, God wishes no one to perish. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. You know, I still, one of the old songs, Steve, that I like, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I just, I can't get away from that. He was thinking of me, all right? Our, our, the Bible says our name is written in his palm. And again, I don't understand how all those names could be doing. I mean, God can do anything he wants to do, but it's all based on love. And I'm telling you, the sin of lawlessness is hate. Okay, hate. I, I'm even sometimes taken back by Christians who use the word hate. And I'm telling you, if my... Children or grandchildren use the word hate. I correct them right there. You don't hate anyone. Okay? God loves everyone. Jesus loves everyone. But the sin of lawlessness is, is hate. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in 
unrighteousness. And that's kind of where we are in studying Revelation. You know, God's come to the point, and He's just simply saying, you know, those who are going to be saved are going to be saved, and those who are still here, you know, He, he gives them a chance, and He gives them a chance. Uh, but I'm just telling you, it's not that His patience has run out. You think of how long He has been, you know, sharing the gospel, how long the gospel has been. I mean, you know, if you go back to, you know, Old Testament times, biblical times, and I understand it was still about faith. But even if you go back to the first century, centuries, centuries have gone on, and the gospel has been shared and shared and shared, but still people reject of the gospel of Christ, and they follow lawlessness. And folks, that's why, man, we don't know who is lost. We don't know who is saved. And we just need to share the gospel and let the Holy Spirit and God do the rest. Romans 8. And I finish with this, Romans 8. And I think Paul says it best in these three verses. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but let those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Folks, it's either or. It's not both. You either saved or you're lost. You either have the Spirit of God in you or you don't have the Spirit of God in you. Either you follow the Holy Spirit and obey the Word of God or you just do your own thing. It's my life. It's how a lot of people live. It's my life. If I want to sin, I'm going to sin. If I want to cuss, I'm going to cuss. If I want to hurt people, I'm going to hurt people. All right? And that's the difference in saved and lost. That's the difference in following God and following lawlessness. And here it is. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And if you just ask people, hey, what do you want? I mean, not, not sharing the gospel with anybody else. You just ask them the question straight up. You want life or you want death? What do you think their answer would be? It would be life. But folks, life is one thing. Eternal life is something else. Okay, it takes faith. It takes trust in God. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that man is a sinner, and man cannot get to heaven apart from the blood of Jesus Christ and the work of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against the law. Why do these people do this? Folks, they don't know God. They don't understand God. They don't have the mind of Christ. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Folks, as I get older and older, I find myself wanting to please God more and more. And I know I still fail. I, I know, you know, I am not the best Christian on earth. I am not the best pastor on earth. I'm not the best husband or father on earth. But I'm just telling you, folks, I want to be those things. And God gives us His Spirit. And if we will listen to the Holy Spirit, do not listen to rumors. Do not listen to gospel. All right? Test the spirits, First John tells us, and know whether they are from God or, or they, whether they're from, from Satan or, or the spirit of the Antichrist. And just keep sharing the gospel with others around. Father, thank you for the day. And God, I, I know the truth. God, I know the truth is the word of God. I know the truth is God. I know the truth is Jesus Christ. I know that he died to save us from our sins. So God, I pray as we go out in life that we will be not only speaking the truth, but sharing the truth with others. God, there's still a lost world out there. There's still people that need Christ. They need Christ so bad. And we may be the only Christian, or we may even be the only Bible that they see. We may be the only one around them that doesn't cuss. And God, I pray, Lord, that when they ask, why, why are you not mad about that? Why are you so calm about that? Why? And they ask the questions. God, I pray that we would throw open the door to a gospel presentation 
God, we all have Bibles. We all can mark the Roman road. But God, I pray that we would use our testimony and the Word of God to overcome the lawlessness this world has. And God, I'm not trying to be negative, but I truly believe it's just going to get worse and worse. And God, I pray that Christians would rise up. I pray that we would stand up. God, I pray we would com- uh, proclaim truth to a lost and dying world. God, thank you for the Apostle Paul. Uh, Lord, just thank you for the Holy Spirit, and thank you that we can study the Word of God and be challenged uh, to, to share our faith uh, with others to this lost world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.